Hi guys, James at Rampant Live Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a good few different beer styles. And if people were to ask me about this brewery, I would say that they are very solid all round. Potentially the best all round brewery in the country in my opinion and definitely one of my personal favourite Scottish breweries. Now the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I have tried from them before. I don't think I've reviewed anything within this style category from them before though when it comes to like sit down reviews and things but it may well have featured on an out and about video that I did when I visited this brewery about you know two years ago or something like that. But the beer itself is meant to be a very nice one. It's one that I was very curious to try when I saw it on social media. So needless to say, I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. So hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head down to the south of Scotland, to the Scottish Borders region. We're going to go to a little place called Galashiels. And that of course means that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from the wonderful Tempest Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Purple Burglar Alarm. It comes in at 4.5% ABV. And this one is a fruited sour beer. So uh, yeah, um, this beer just kind of caught my eye because there was a thing going around the internet that Scottish people could not say purple burglar alarm. Uh, whether that's true for me, I honestly don't know. But yeah, there was a few videos on YouTube and Instagram and stuff like that where it was Scottish people trying to say this thing. And it was quite funny actually. But yeah, uh, this one just kind of caught my eye for that reason. And I was also thinking that, you know, I haven't really reviewed any sour beers on the channel from Tempest Brewing Company before. So let's have a little look at this one and see what it's all about. And that's just what happened. So uh, yeah, a black currant sour beer, this one. It doesn't state that it's a Bellina Weisse or a Goza or anything like this. They are simply just calling this one a fruited sour. But yeah, let's crack on with this one and see how we get on. Always nice to return to Tempest Brewing Company and I'm curious to see what this has in store for us. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Tempest Brewing Company before and we will no doubt add some more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the little search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, whatever you like. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that though, you can check out the playlists of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Scottish playlist along with a number of other things. And we are continuing to add to that, of course. But check out the playlist of beers from other countries too. There are some really interesting reviews up on the channel these days. But uh, yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you once again about Tempest Brewing Company. So Tempest Brewing Company or Tempest Brewery was founded back in 2010 by Gavin and Anika Mikojohn. So Anika trained as a chef in New Zealand and then the couple returned to Scotland in 2007 to run the Cobbles Bar in Kelso. But at this point, Gavin had previously worked for Whistler Brewing Company in British Columbia over in Canada, and he had a real appreciation of craft beer and had also taken some brewing courses in Sydney and Australia, and he actually home-brewed for a period of time after this in his garage in Wellington in New Zealand, which, as we know, is a very good beer city, and he was using a very small 50-litre brew kit. Uh, but Gavin is joined at the brewery by Alan Rice, who is the business development manager. He previously worked for Stuart Brewery up in Edinburgh and also lived in New Zealand and Australia and had experience of the craft beer scenes there. But uh, together they've done really quite well and, as I say, Tempest Brewery have gone on to be probably the best rounded uh, or the most well-rounded brewery in Scotland, actually. 
but the brewery was originally housed in old dairy buildings in Kelso and the brewery equipment that they had there was kind of homemade it was uh, the idea behind it was just to produce really big flavour beers on a very shoestring budget but the beers proved to be very very popular and this pushed them to grow the company so they moved to their current and uh, bigger home at the Tweed Bank Industrial Estate over in Gala Shales and in June of 2019 they submitted plans to build a new brewery with a building uh, with a bar in the building, sorry, and a restaurant on the site of the former Eldon Mill, which is very close to the relatively new Tweed Bank train station. But this move has still yet to be finalised, and they're still based in the industrial estate for the moment. And I think much of that, much of that delay, was due to the effects of the COVID nineteen pandemic. But as of August twenty twenty three, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced one hundred and seventy different beers, according to Untapped. And like I've stated a few times in this video, for me, Tempest Brewing Company are the most well-rounded craft brewery in the country just now. We've had some really nice IPAs from them, both New England and West Coast. They do a really nice Imperial Stout, Scotch Ales, Barley Wines. The sour beers are good as well. Uh, yeah, if you do get the chance to try some of the Tempest beers, simply pick a style that you like. And uh, I'm pretty sure you will be satisfied with the results that you get from these guys. A very, very solid brewery and probably my favourite Scottish craft brewery, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for the history section. So if you want to learn a little bit more about this brewery, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, let's go on then and have a little look at the beer itself. So like I mentioned to you earlier on, this one comes in at 4.5% ABV. They're describing this one as a black currant fruit sour. And uh, yeah, the name on this one, Purple Bur Burglar Alarm, is taken from uh, a little thing that was going viral on the internet that Scottish people couldn't see. And I nearly messed it up there, so I guess it's true. But yeah, um, really nicely presented. This one looks a little bit like a kind of 80s disco type theme on the label there but there you can see the more modern Tempest Brewing Company uh, symbol there and you can see the slightly older lightning bolt and the glass one on the side there but plain silver top on the can it is incidentally a 440 milliliter can and this one uh, I believe I bought at uh, Valhalla's Goat through in Glasgow I think it was about £5.75 so that translates to roughly oh, about seven euros and somewhere in the region of eight dollars American, something like that. So yeah, about eighty, uh, sorry, about seventy Swedish kroner. This one would have been for those of you watching over there too. But it tells you a little bit about on about the beer on the side of the can here. Impossible to say, and even harder to resist. The purple burglar alarm is sounding for those who that only consume black currants from a carton through a little purple straw. This is the sweet taste of the finest Scottish black currants cut with the sharpness of Philly sour yeast and smoothed out by sumptuous milk sugars. So yeah, it lists on this one that there's malted barley, wheat, oats, black currants and lactose in this one. So it's maybe going to be somewhere between a kind of um, sort of Berliner Weisse type fruited sour and also a kind of smoothie sour actually. Uh, yeah, we'll just need to see how we get on with this one but I'm really curious about it. You can feel the density of this thing in the can when you hold it as well. So without further ado, I think we should just get this guy out into the glass and see what it's about. The Purple Burglar Alarm, a 4.5% blackcurrant fruited sour from the wonderful Tempest Brewery, Tempest Brewing Company, whatever you want to call them, in Gala Shields in the Scottish Borders region. So let's do this. Ooh. Now that does look pretty damn nice, I have to say. Just from the pour, I'm not sure if we, we're going to be able to class this one as a smoothie sour, but yeah, fruited sour all the way. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, anyway, this looks absolutely great, I have to say. Uh, before the head disappears, I think we can say safely, when we have 75%, 80% of the beer out into the glass, we can see that this beer is poured with somewhere between a half and a two-third finger of a frothy, kind of pinky, purple head there. You can see a few kind of medium-sized bur uh, bubbles just on the surface of the liquid there, but you can see the head gets a little bit foamier the higher up that you go. But the colour of this one 
It's absolutely lovely. Um, I think we would have to describe the colour of this one as being a sort of Heart of Midlothian, burgundy maroon type colour. Um, it just looks very, very nice. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the, the bottom of the head there, but not too much in the way of visible carbonation. And incidentally, the head has just faded down to be quite a nice thin foamy layer, but you've got that ring just around the edge of the glass there. But overall, the beer does look very, very nice, actually. Uh, but yeah, colour-wise, definitely a Heart of Midlothian, sort of burgundy-type note, I would say. But yeah, remember the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any barrel ageing that you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect its colour too. And when it comes to uh, sour beers, like modern sour beers like this, I guess we can call them, the fruits are going to play quite a big role. And that's immediately obvious with this one. The colour is down to the presence of the uh, the black currants. So, yeah, I don't think we need to say anything more about the appearance of this beer. Let's have a wee look at the aroma then and see how we get on. So, let's do this. Yeah, um... It smells really quite nice, I have to say that. So, as I've said many a time when it comes to these modern sour beers, these beers are by no means the most complex of things that you're going to come across. But if they're done well, they can just be really, really nice to drink. And I feel that this beer is, uh, is going to be no exception to that rule. Um, you know, when it comes to sour beers in Scotland, of course, you've got the likes of Vault City, uh, Holy Goat and uh, the smaller ones like Acid Brewing Cartel and things like that too uh, but Tempest have been known, I've, I've seen quite a few sours from Tempest over the years like I say these guys are a very well rounded brewery in my opinion um, but this one doesn't seem to, to fall shy of anything that we would expect from the kind of specialist sour beer breweries, it smells really really nice but like I say quite straightforward. gives you everything that you would want um, so, yeah, where do we start with this one, aroma-wise? Um, on the malty side of things, then, you can smell, there is a nice little bit of kind of fresh, white bready bread crust to this one. It has got a little bit of a kind of, there's a, there are a few different kind of bready aromas in here. There's a little bit of brown bread, a bit of fluffier white bread. You can smell the thickness, though, from the, the wheat, the presence of the wheat and the oats, with this particular beer, there's like a little bit of a kind of yogurty character. And as I say, there, when we talk about the styles of these sour beers, it can be uh, a little bit important. This one, if we're talking about the more old school styles, styles it is a bit more akin to a Bellina Weisse. It doesn't have the saltiness to be a Goza. I would also say that it's not quite sweet enough in its aroma to be a, a smoothie sour. That's the other thing I would say with this one. We'll see when we actually taste the thing right enough because quite often with some of these beers the, the aroma can be a little bit more um, timid than the actual flavour of the beer. But certainly with this one it's, um, it's a, it is a really nice aroma actually. But as I say, you've got bread crust in there, you've got a bit of wholemeal brown bread, you've got a little bit of white bread. You can smell a little bit of a kind of dense or wheaty character out of this one. And the wheat does give you a teeny little bit of bitiness in the back of the nose. And you are getting a little bit of a kind of oaty smoothness in this one. But the main reason I wouldn't say this is a smoothie sour is because you don't get that sort of yogurty, petit filou type thing out of this one that you can often get out of the smoothie sours. I mean, when I talk about smoothie sours, I'm of course referencing the likes of uh, uh, Elma Levin in Malmö, Fermentera in a, uh, Duck Pond, these sort of Swedish breweries. You know, the, the smoothie sours are very, very popular in the Nordic countries. But this one does strike me as having a little bit more kind of old school Berliner Weisse type character to it. Uh, there's a little bit of sweetness there in the malt base, you know, a wee bit of Werther's Original, butter candy, butterscotch and things. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't know if there really is too much to report in terms of the uh, 
the malt base in this one. I think that's covered it. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, I'm curious, does this beer actually use hops? Uh, this is one of the big, it doesn't have hops listed uh, in terms of uh, ingredients, right enough. And this is one of the great debates among uh, sour beer brewers. You know, if you use hops in a sour beer, they will detract a little bit from the actual sour side of the beer, but they can add to the complexity of the flavour. What they used to do in the old days with the Huizes, uh, Cassis, all of these kind of beer styles and the Flanders Reds, was that they would put older hops into the beer, so the alpha acid potency had kind of dropped away, you'd get the complexity of the flavour, but it wouldn't detract from the, the actual sourness of the beer. But uh, yeah, with this, it, it's a bit of a debate there, because if you're talking about a modern sour beer, a number of brewers will argue that you don't have to have hops in the beer, but a number of brewers will argue, yeah, it gives you a bit more complexity in terms of flavour. This one seems not to have hops in it, but you will still get, uh, even in beers like this that don't have the hops, you will still get a little bit of that kind of placebo effect from the aroma. And I'm certainly getting that here. I mean, I get a little teeny bit of earthiness, a little bit of herbal character, and there are some kind of grassy notes. But with it being black currants, I'm getting this sort of woody, brambly sort of character coming out of the beer too, which is um, which is really interesting. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a woody, brambly sort of thing earthy, a little bit herbal, and also a little touch grassy, but yeah, it's a really interesting uh, aroma, this one, I have to say. Uh, they do talk on the can about this beer being a Philly sour to an extent, but that particular style category isn't something that I'm overly familiar with, so that's something that I do need to explore a little bit more, uh, to be quite honest. So, um, yeah. I do like how this uh, how this pieces together in that sense that it does have a little bit of green component to it. So, on the fruity side of things, then it is quite obviously black currant, and um, there is a little bit of other stuff coming out of the beer as well. Um, you do have a little bit of a sharper black berry, but yeah, the more oily and juicy black currants that sit underneath that are really quite nice. But then yeah, I get a little bit of kind of candied strawberry. A little bit of um, you know, kind of oily fig and stuff like that in there too. Uh, the aroma of this beer is just really quite nice, and as I say, it gets a big thumbs up from uh, from me. Um, aroma wise, I think this is uh, this is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I'm just very curious to actually taste this thing at this point. I have to say, like I said, I've not reviewed a sour beer on the channel from Tempest before. I did try one when I actually visited the brewery. Uh, maybe about a year and a half ago and it was really very nice so yeah curious to try this as I've said so yeah this one is the purple burglar alarm a 4.5% blackcurrant fruit sour from the wonderful Tempest Brewery down in Gala Shields in the Scottish Borders region let's check crack into this one then and see how we go Slange, skull, cheers and do practice your uh, enunciations and pronunciations of purple burglar alarm. Let me know how you got on with that in the comment section below. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah. That's pretty nice. Um, yeah. I'm going to see straight away with this one. It's quite a, it's actually quite a light, nice and drinkable, uh, almost like summer sour beer this one. Um, as you would expect from Tempest, it's full of flavour. Um, you'll often find that with, with the different beers from, from Tempest. They are everything that you'd expect and just really nicely done and I think that is a good summary of what my feelings on um, on this particular beer are. It is, again, just really nicely done. So a big thumbs up to Tempest. I did try um, a sour beer in my own about video a while back and I did think that that was really nice, but to actually sit down and think about one of these things properly, I think is gonna be really quite interesting. Just on first impression, as I say, I'm not madly familiar with the Philly sour, style if you like but if we're talking about the more 
old school European styles. I think this one is probably closer to a Bellina Weisse than anything else. It's definitely not sweet enough to be a smoothie sour. It's not kind of salty enough to be a goza and things. It is probably most akin to a, a Bellina Weisse rather than anything else. Uh, but it's a very nicely done beer actually. Um, so I think we can do as we always do and just break the flavour of the beer down a little bit and describe it for you more in depth. But it gives you everything you want. A lovely little bit of malty smoothness. There's a big bit of juicy fruity character in this one and it's actually just quite lightly sour this one. Very, very summery beer. I think that's a, a fair statement. So yeah, let's break it down and see what we have. The impact flavour on this one is really nice too. A little bit of sharp sour character in the beginning, but it just mellows out really nicely. And as I've said many a time with sour beers, for me, um, the mark of a good sour beer is one that can just give you a little bit of sharpness in the beginning, but then mellow out really nicely. And this beer is very successful in doing that. But we'll start off describing the flavour from that middle third of the palate, as we often do. So the backbone of the beer, you've got a lovely little bit of that kind of fresh wholemeal, kind of brown bready bread crust there. So that's really nice. A little bit further forward on that middle third of your palate, you get a wee touch uh, of a more kind of woody character coming out of this one. So there's a little bit of woodiness in there, and then there's almost just a little bit, on top of the woodiness, you almost have just a little bit of a crackery type note. Um... And yeah, I do like how that pieces together, for sure. wasn't quite expecting it to be a kind of brown bready bread crust, but that really is what I'm getting in this one. And I would say that those bready notes, they come out a little bit more the further into the aftertaste that you go. So when you have the liquid on your tongue, what you're mainly going to get is a a smooth, slightly denser and also slightly sweet white bready character coming out of the beer. So yeah, the, the, the first layer of the beer above all of the things I've just described there is like a more dense white bready wheaty kind of character. Um, above that, above the kind of white bready character, you will get that even denser, smooth wheaty white bready character coming out of this one. So you'll find that the malty base in this beer really is quite layered. As I said before, this is not a smoothie sour, so you're not really getting these kind of yogurty characters to a great extent in the flavour. But above the kind of more dense, wheaty white bready layer, you can feel some of the oats coming out of this one. So the oats, I think are, are quite interesting because further back on that middle third of your palate you have quite a little bit of oaty dryness to this one but then yeah as you move further forward on that middle third of your palate you're getting a wee bit more of uh, you are getting a little bit of that kind of yogurty petit filou fromage free type thing coming out of the beer but not overly much I think that's uh, also fair to say So yeah, for me, yeah, the fruity, um, say this beer, just plays into this little bit of a yogurty type flavour that you get at the front of that uh, middle third of your palate. But above the kind of oaty layer in this one, as I say, you've got the oats kind of go down the middle line of your tongue, and they've got a little bit of density in the middle, and then as you move out toward the edges of the palate, it just gives you a little bit of dryness, but you can feel that on top of the oats, there's a little circle there in the middle third of your palate, and it gives you a wee touch of a kind of sweeter, where there's original butter candy type note. And I, I again, I really like how that pieces together, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, the malty side of this beer is quite nice, but quite bready, kind of brown bready, a little bit sweet, and a wee touch, uh, kind of creamy, and a little bit yogurty as well. So the middle third of your palate in this beer actually does have a surprising amount of complexity to it when you think about it. But I think that's everything we can really say about this one. So let's have a little look at the back third of your palate then. And as I've often said, the back third of your palate will give you similar flavours to the middle third of your palate, just at different intensities. But do remember that the... Uh, that generally speaking with your palate, the sweeter flavours will come out further forward 
and the more dry and bitter flavours will come out further back. So the border region between middle and back there of your palate, you do get a nice little bit of a kind of bready build up in there. A little bit of sweeter brown bread underneath, but then a white bread character on top. Then the base layer, the base layer of the um, the base layer of that back third of your palate is more. Um, the base layer of that kind of back third of your palate is more. Kind of uh, how would you say? It has a little bit more of a kind of bready bread crusty dryness to it. You get a little touch of a cracker on top of that. Then there's a layer of a more kind of airy and slightly sweeter brown bread. Then a kind of more airy white bready character sitting on top of that. And you can feel some of the kind of wheaty characteristics just going over the top of that. And that's the top of the, the malty part of that back 30 pound. And above everything else, you've got the kind of yeasty notes as well. Um, so let's have a wee look at the kind of yeasty flavours that this beer's giving you. So, the yeasty side of the beer is really kind of more bready than anything else. So, yeah, the yeasty side of the beer for me, it's quite, um, as I say, you've got a little bit of a kind of drier, but slightly more dense brown bready character in there. There's a wee bit of a kind of crackery or woody sort of vibe to the yeasty notes as well. And it's just wrapped in a little tiny touch of kind of biscuity type character. Um, and yeah, all of that sits on top of that back third of your palate. Um, so that's really quite interesting. The yeasty notes in this beer are a wee bit different from what I've seen from uh, from Tempest Brewing Company before. But yeah, I do like it. But definitely back third of your palate, you can feel the flavour is taller. Then as you move further forward into the middle third of your palate, it just kind of condenses down and squashes together that little bit more. So, yeah, good stuff, I have to say. Let's focus on the kind of green component of the beer, or in this case, the kind of placebo green component, hoppy side of things. But, yeah, I think we've said everything we need to about the malty side of the beer. So, in the back corners of the palate, you do have a little touch of... Um, there is a little touch of, of earthiness in there, but... Not very much. There's a little bit of herbal character as you move further forward, and then as you push toward the front of that, uh, the front of the the sides of your palate, you do start to get a slightly almost oily, wet, floral sort of thing. But the smoothness on the sides of your palate really is uh, the smoothness and wetness on the sides of your palate is really what lets you know that there hasn't been hops used in this beer, because otherwise it would be significantly drier. Round the front curve of the tongue, you do get a little bit of a kind of wet, freshly cut, leafy, grassy sort of thing there. And again, that's placebo effect because uh, you're just used to these flavours. But yeah, th there is a little bit of a placebo green component uh, around the kind of front edges of your tongue with this particular beer. But it works nicely. It does work really nicely. Um, yeah, let's have a little look at the front third of your palate then and the fruity and sour side of things. So yeah, border region between front third and middle third of your palate. You have got a nice little bit of, you've got a nice little bit of a kind of bready build up in there. A little bit of brown bread in the base and a wee bit of a white bready character on top. And then the base of the front third of your palate, you've got a little bit of bread crust there. You do get a little bit of a kind of woody and crackery note there. And then you've got a mix of white and brown bread sitting on top of that. And then you get the juicy fruity characters just sitting on top of that um, and because there's not hops in this one I don't think we can say that there's that typical oily bubble where the fruity juicy esters roll the way out of the beer for me it is kind of just juicy fruit all the way so when it comes to the impact sourness of this particular beer when you take the liquid in yeah you get that little bit of sharpness there behind the front curve of the tongue but the beer isn't overly tart it's actually quite juicy and for me one of the main differences between a currant and a, a berry is that berries are really sharp and tart the currants are a little bit more oily and juicy you can kind of feel that difference with this particular beer yeah you do get the really nice uh, kind of oily um, juiciness 
of the the current in this beer and a little bit of sharpness in the beginning but as I say it just mellows out really nice and gives you that more oily character but yeah further back on the further back on that front third of your palate you're getting a little bit of a more juicy and oily figgy character in there there's um, little touches of kind of candied strawberry and stuff like that but yeah these are obviously placebo flavours if you like yeah, it's all about the juicy black currants and you can feel with this beer around that some of the fruity carrots are just spreading around the, the edges of the palate too. And this is something that always happens if you add fruit into beer as an adjunct. It's always going to suppress a little bit of the green component of your hops. And it's, it's quite obvious that that would be the case with uh, with this particular beer. Uh, but yeah, flavour-wise, this one is, uh, is really quite nice. And as I said earlier, stylistically speaking, for me, it's closest to a Berliner Weiss. I'm not overly familiar with the kind of Philly uh, the Philly sours and things but yeah it's it's just a really nice drinkable beer this one I think we can see that very nice kind of summer session sour would be another way to put it but yeah I think we've said everything we really need to about the flavour of this beer to be honest with you I think we can round off with a wee look at the mouthfeel so for me um I think this beer is very much, uh, I think it's right in the middle of the spectrum, to be honest with you. I think calling this one mid-bodied is a bit fair. The carbonation has a little bit of a prickle to it, but generally speaking it's quite smooth. The beer does have a degree of oily slickness to it, I would say as well. Um, certainly, as I said earlier, it's certainly not a smoothie sour. That's absolutely... Uh, out of the question for this particular beer. It's definitely not a smoothie sour. But the malt base itself has a little bit of dryness underneath, a bit of smoothness in the middle and a little touch of dense uh, and kind of dry sweetness, density and dry sweetness on top. Um, we've said the beer has no uh, real green component if you like and in that case I think there's probably, technically speaking, there's zero IBUs to this one but you also have to talk about perceived bitterness and maybe you've got like 5 to 10 IBUs, something like that. But generally speaking, the green component is quite smooth in this particular beer. But on the fruity side of things, it's lovely and juicy. And the sourness that you get out of this one, it's got a little bit of a sharpness in the impact, then a lovely kind of wet, uh, juicy character the further into the aftertaste that you go. But uh, yeah, it's a really nice sour beer, this one. And it shows you, it, it, if you're used to blackberry sours, um, and you're very curious about the difference between berries and currants. This one really shows you the kind of oiliness and uh, juiciness that you can expect from a currant as opposed to uh, to a berry. So yeah, really cool. Um, sour beer this one from, from Tempest and it shows you they are very capable in this particular sour in this particular style category too. But I would love to see them do a proper big smoothie sour. I think Tempest would uh, do some really interesting stuff with those kinds of beers but yeah I think we can uh, leave it at that for this one so this was the purple burglar alarm a 4.5% blackcurrant fruited sour from Tempest Brewing Company in Galashiels in the Scottish Borders once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below let me know what your favourite beers are from Tempest Brewing Company as well and we will no doubt return to these guys again at some point in the very near future. But until then, slanger, Scott, cheers, check out my social media, check out Tempest Brewing Company social media, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Slanger, Skull, and cheers.